last four days we were not been able to upload because they were trying to edit the last so many versions and trying to put it up in different different pages for more people to see because I heard we have a hit of around 50 likes to a crore in a in a fortnight so they wanted to keep the power, the pace going beautifully hence I also allowed it and this is the 44th story from the Zen Flesh Zen Bones written by Paul Reps. One evening as Sichiri Kojun was reciting sutras, a thief with a sharp sword entered, demanding either his money or his life. This is what is happening in our education department. The teacher is teaching and the student enters, teacher is teaching the sutras. Teacher is teaching her ideas. Teacher is trying to share her complete wealth of her knowledge in such a beautiful way in the classrooms. And students are disturbing the teachers. Thief, they have come in the form of thief. And all the parents are like thieves. And all the students think if they can bully and become indisciplined, they, they are called the best thief. One evening, as Ichiri Kojun was selling suit, a thief with a sharp sword entered. Sharp sword means sharp tongue, a dirty tongue, indisciplined tongue, indisciplined mind, entered demanding either his money or his life. Freedom from the classes. They wanted to disturb the girls, wanted to disturb the boys, wanted to show off. All this is coming because they were not focused. In their houses, the Samskriti in the houses were broken. And you call it the, the fault of the parents. No, no, no. Fault of the society. No. Society is still there. The parents are still there. It's the mind. The thief comes in different forms. You thought the child was the thief. But behind the child, the books by the education department. The education department sent policemen in the name of invigilators to create a feeling that you are thief and we are the policemen. We are standing in front of you to find out whether you are going to copy. But they are already told not to copy. And then they told them not to study. They never gave them time to study. They kept on dumping a huge amount of waste books, which is had no value at all. A boring subject into the children's head so that they can create enmity, fear, greed, jealousy, egoistic selfishness in the mind of the child. And parents do not know because parents a family which sits together, it's your praise together, grows together, and parents' forehead has been put with their gun and asked them not to sit next to the child. They drag the father and mother into the factories and companies in the name of trying to give them a salary, which is a slave money. And as they take the salary and come out, gangsters, they send gangsters, the name of loans, buying houses, beautiful restaurants, and they swindle all the money back. They say in Norway, an Indian mother was feeding the child with the hand and the authorities in the European country of Norway arrested the mother and took the child by force into the child protection center. The mother was shocked. In Australia, they did the same thing because in the child was sleeping, the Indian child was sleeping, a five-year Indian child was sleeping with her mother. Authorities found out how could a child sleep with the mother. They arrested the mother, took the child to the child protection center. The mother went and committed suicide. 
And when you look to the Norway and you look to the Australia, there's not much a difference what is happening. There at least authorities are telling, don't sit next to the child, we'll arrest you. And here they didn't say, don't sit or sleep next to the child. They are never given the time for the parents to sit next to the child. They drag the child, drag the parents. And when the child doesn't see the parents, even in the night, they have to go to another parent called the stepfather or stepmother in the tuition centers. And then policemen will be there to find out whether that tuition master is having a good touch, a bad touch, and abuse is going on, a molest is going on, rape is going on. You create a lot of those stories and then you say Norway and Australia is bad. Here in India, you are bad. You have to change the um, education policy. You will not change because the thief is running. Thief is the head of this system, the rulers. And I do not know whether the rulers knows this, that they are also into the same gang. One evening, as Chiri Kojun was reciting sutra, the thief with a sharp sword, sharp sword, sharp tongue, Enter demanding either his money or his life, money or his life. The teacher, if he scolds the child, her money and salary will be cut by the authorities. Life. The teacher goes and whacks the child. The child can go and complain to the police and the police can arrest the teacher. Teacher has got no value. Can you believe? What is this country? What is this country? How could a police station call my teachers to come and visit the police station? It has gone to dogs. No policeman has got the right to call my teacher to the police station. Madness happening in this country. Sichiri told him, do not disturb me. The teacher told the child, do not disturb me. What else can I do? What else the teachers can do? What else can the mother and father do? Society do? There was no society. They broke the society into pieces. So Sichiri do, do not disturb. You can find the money in that dryer. Then he resumed his recitation. You can leave the classroom. You can take the amount of books you wanted or you can take the bag. You can go. And the son comes to the house and threatens the father when he become a teenager, the mother and said, your life or my money, they give all the money, yes, all the money, yes.